You found a place to belong here in the Circle of Friends. I'm Missy, and I'm with Gwen today. Good morning, Gwen. Good morning. Here we are, day three. I'm we so excited. Are. This is so much fun to look at the scripture with you and to be, frankly, be challenged personally. Yeah. I, and honestly, listeners, I, I think I can speak for the people around the table. When we get together and we open God's Word, each one of us... Walks away challenged. Yeah, walks away challenged. <laughs> There's days when I'm like, ouch, 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 where's yeah. my steel-toed shoes? That's so true. Mm-hmm. Um, but I... I love that you brought up this idea of confessing our sin out loud to someone else. Now, it has to be someone that you can trust and who is spiritual, as we read in Galatians 6, that you see the spiritual fruit in their life um, or that who will hold you accountability and will restore you with gentleness and grace, those things that God desires. Uh, But the beauty that comes from that, you told a, a very beautiful story of a young woman who came and confessed to you in the small group and they surrounded her. Yes. And they loved her, and God God restored her. And although there's consequences, earthly consequences to sin, there's also some beautiful, powerful, wonderful things that God brings from it. Absolutely. So uh, that's a that was a great challenge for each one of us to to believe God is who He says He is. He yes. loves us, and He wants to restore. Yes. So in that restoration, it may take some courage for you to step out and say, I- I've just got to confess it. I need to admit it. Uh, but when you do, yeah, He's got you. He's there. Yes. And He will have people there to help you along the way as well. So yeah. um, we've been in Galatians 6 this week and the idea of carrying one another's mm-hmm. burdens. Um, burdens we were not meant to carry by ourselves. And one right. of those things you said was sin. Yes. And we were not meant to to carry sin. That's not how God designed us. It's a cost of the fall. Yeah. Yeah. And it, 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 the effects of that, the consequences of carrying that mm-hmm. uh, can be extreme physically, emotionally, spiritually on all those in yes. all those ways. Yes. Um, and in other places, Paul talks about putting off and he'll make a whole list of things that we are to put off, mm-hmm. you know, and it's that idea of carrying something we're not meant to be carrying. You know, we are to consider ourselves dead to sin, uh, but alive to Christ. Um, and it's the idea that a dead man doesn't, he just kind of lays there. Hmm doesn't interact with anything yeah he doesn't touch anything he doesn't stroke it he doesn't pick it up he doesn't he doesn't do anything with it think about it if you could walk in a way that you literally don't pick up a thought you don't fuel it you don't stroke it you don't carry it you don't hide it away for later (laughs) you just don't touch it you look at it and you move away Mm -hmm. that's living dead to a sin, to a temptation. Um, Okay, so (laughs) you were talking about just sitting and sometimes feeling like we get pricked. My my reaction this morning was, okay, Lord, that went in a different place than I expected it to go. (laughs) Is there something you need to tell me? (laughs) So I'm thinking later I need to do some time of reflection and see if I've got some things I need to confess. Um, And it's good to sit down and just say, search me, oh God. Hmm. Know my heart. See if there's any yeah. wicked way in me. Yep. Um, because if we want to be in a position to lead others, you better believe the enemy is going to be watching for anything that he can make a stumbling block in the lives of other believers. And if there's something in your life that's laying bare, bare or sorry, laying hidden, you better believe he's going to try to uncover it yeah. because he can use it. You know, it, it does. It's not that he has to always make things in our lives. Sometimes he just has to uncover it a little bit. Absolutely. And make somebody else stumble over it or discover it or mm-hmm. touch it. Yeah. yeah. And things never really stay buried forever. No, they sure don't. I mean, it, it, it either rises up in you or like you said, other people stumble across it or yeah. if and especially if you are carrying hidden sin, yeah. it's going to come out in your character and your voice and your thoughts and your, I mean, just in your, I think in your actions and your speech. Yes. It, it will be seen. Maybe not everybody can see it, yeah. but those with discerning hearts certainly can see it. Yep. Because everything changes. I think of, um, for this is just a for instance, but I, I, I know uh, 
uh, if if you have a pornography addiction, a lot of mm-hmm. times that can come out as emotional abuse mm-hmm. or uh, disrespect towards women, women in mm-hmm. general, your spouse, your whatever. You you can kind of see that sometimes in men that are really struggling with it. Yep. Not everybody sees it, but a lot of times there is a, there is a real connection there. So, uh, well, and and I'll tell you too. <laughs> years ago. Um, I was talking to somebody whose dad had died and they were going through the attic in the house and they found his addictions. Mm. He was gone. He wasn't there to cover or protect or anything. And right there, when those were uncovered, it just made a lot of sense. Destroyed his character. Yeah. Yeah. And it made a lot of sense of things. And, and, you know, it, it will come out. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it will come out. Yeah, you're you are better off confessing before yeah. it does. And and God has us all on a process, and we all sin. So it's not even a matter of we're not even talking about it's not a matter of judgment kind of thing. No. And, and read Galatians six again for yourself. See that this is this is a loving thing. Paul is trying to yeah. teach us how to love one another well because right. God Himself loves us well. And I think. Um, I look at my life and other people that I know, and when God uncovers sin, He He uncovers it f- to take care of it, yes. right? For us to take care of it. He Jesus Himself has already died for that sin. So, but if we if we hang out there, yes, then we that's not where we want to be. We, it's a bad place for us to be because number one, the Spirit within us knows. You're, you're not following God. You're not being obedient to him. You're not comfortable in that sin. If you're a Christian and you've given, given your life over to Jesus and you have a relationship with him, you're never going to be comfortable with sin. Any sin, little, right. big, whatever. Right. I mean, big in the sense of bigger consequences on, on earth, not eternal consequences. Sin has been covered. I mean, I've been a Christian for a long time. When I sin, that sin does not have eternal consequences for me. Jesus has has absolutely taken care of it. But if if I sin, I continue in that sin, it absolutely has consequences yeah. on earth for me. And those consequences can grow and grow yes. and grow. And, and the damage. Ripple effect. Associated with them can yes. be horrific. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And the, the thing is, Gwen, I think that we really need to embrace this idea of a lot of us are afraid to admit when we sin. Yeah. But there's really no fear in this because, number one, God loves us and he, he knows what's in our heart and our life. He, he already knows and he loves us yeah. and even fear of other people. The thing is, fear of man takes you down one road. Fear of God takes you down a much better road, <laughs> much better to be right before God than so-called right in the eyes of men. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. You you think, oh, that's a that's too shameful a path for me. I can't walk in public with people knowing that. Let me tell you, you can't walk at all yeah. without revealing it to God and to others and those who need to know about it. Well, and honestly, we never hide it as well as we think we hide it. Oh, that's absolutely Ever. true. Ever. Ever. Because there's always evidence of it somehow lived Mm. out um because buried stuff never stays buried no um okay so you're bringing to mind a couple of things i wanted to share so okay Mm, let's see psalm 103 and let's start Mm, let's start at um, verse 8. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness. Okay, what's he doing right there? He's talking about God's character, who God is. God does not change who he is, whether you are stuck in your sin or following hard after him, mm. walking in victory. He will not always strive with us. He's not always going to fight us to make us walk in obedience. Mm. Nor will he keep his anger at bay forever. Mm. 
judgment is going to come for all of us, right? Yeah. But verse 10, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear, awe, or respect, reverence him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has has compassion on those who fear him for he himself knows our frame he is mindful that we are but dust I love this passage because it shows us the mind and the heart and the character of Christ of God and I can say those two things interchangeably because of what Hebrews says Hebrews says that Jesus is the exact representation of God the Father Mm. so knowing that we look at earthly Jesus And then we can walk back into the Old Testament Mm. and we can take a passage out of Psalms and we can know that the Jesus of the New Testament is the same likeness Mm. of God of the Old Testament. Amen. I love these first few verses too. And I think um, we're almost ready for a break, but let me read them and we can talk about them as well. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, Mm. who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. Mm. Does that not just tell you, if you're struggling, listener, God loves you so much. He knows your struggle. He he knows you. We are made like, we are but dust. We're like a vapor. We're we're weak vessels. He knows that. He knows that we have our fleshly nature that we fight against. But he's given us the tools that we need to, to fight against that, work against that. But also this idea of confession, that's one of the biggest tools that we have. Yes. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But first, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and we'll be back here in the Circle of Friends. Village Gift Barn in Berlin, Ohio, carries one-of-a-kind finds just as unique as you. Our elegant shop has everything you need to dress up your home and your wardrobe. We're dedicated to offering new, exciting merchandise. As you explore our three amazing floors, that's over 20,000 square feet, you'll discover everything from home decor and furnishings to a beautifully diverse women's boutique. Are your walls blank? Is your furniture blah? Do you never have anything to wear? We've got you covered. Stop by and let our friendly, knowledgeable team help you create a look that's all your own. Village Gift Barn is located in the heart of Amish country at 4755 State Route 39 in Berlin, Ohio.
Welcome back to the table. You've found a place to belong here in the circle of friends. Missy, I love sitting at the table with you. I hope these listeners enjoy it as much as I do. Um, Okay, I wanted to pick up James, uh, chapter 4. Let's let's look at 7 through 10. Um, James 4, 7 says, Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. Okay, this I love for a specific reason. Sometimes we do not sit in the sorrow of our sin enough. Hmm. Sometimes we bounce too quick. Well, do you think that's because we don't really see what sin is? Yes. Like we take it too lightly and the consequences of that sin. And as we talked about earlier this week, the ripple effect or the consequences Mm -hmm. to maybe other people or the destruction that it leaves behind. Or just simply the fact that that sin, that sin alone, whatever that quote unquote little sin is, that sent Jesus to the cross to die. Yes. And that that sin is an abomination to the Lord. Yes. And that like, sin is the gulf between us and God. Yes. Yes. And that uh, sin is our very need for the cross. Do you hear my head thumping on the table? <laughs> oh, I know. I know. And, and honestly, I had this conversation with my littlest the other night. We were talking about just something that she's doing kind of on repeat. And she's looking at me going, sorry. And I'm like, no, we need to sit down and think about what this is. This is a bigger deal than what you're wanting to make this. Yeah. You know, and she had tears in her little eyes when we were talking about the need of just how Jesus, we need Jesus to wash us clean. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that we have things like this. And, you know, so walking her through it, just sitting there with it going, Lord, I'm just so understanding of my need for you as a savior um, in this season. I, I just, okay, so with this passage specifically, though, this is a battle plan for resisting temptation. You want to know how not to sin. You need to take this verse right here, and you need to take um, Psalm 119, verses 9 through um, 11. Um, and these two verses you need to add together. So let me let me do that again, okay? So um, let's do Psalm 119, verse 9 and 11. says, How can a young man or a woman or an old man or an old woman keep their way pure by keeping it according to your word? Oh, God. With all of my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commands. Your word I have treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you. Mm. When God's word is in us, when we are looking at God going, I'm seeking you with all of my heart. Don't let me wander from your commands. I'm hiding them in me. I am am trying the best that I can to make sure that I know what your word says about things. Okay, if we're doing that, and then we go to James 4, 7, submit therefore to God, Hmm. resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God. We just saw in the Old Testament, seeking God with all all of our heart, Mm -hmm. he will draw near to you. That's a promise. And cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. And then I love this part because we a lot of times don't want anybody to feel bad, okay? And there is a difference between feeling guilty 
and feeling shame. Mm -hmm. Feeling guilt is feeling bad about what I've done and how it's impacted others. There is a godly guilt that leads to repentance. Yes. Okay? Shame is when instead of feeling bad about what I've done, I feel like I'm a horrible person. Mm -hmm. And I tear apart my identity. That's not okay. Yeah. Because that's where we are looking at what God has redeemed, and we are destroying its worth and its value. Mm. That's not okay. That is huge and so needed. I mean, obviously, for me, in my life and what I've been through— that was a process of me learning that. But I feel yeah. a lot of people really don't see that because yeah. shame comes to all of us because that's a, that's a tool Absolutely. of Satan. He tries to make us... Sh- he, shame is a tool of his that makes us... He wants us to attack our worth. Attack our worth and our identity in Christ. And yep. if you are in Christ, that is, that's sealed. That's done. That is yes. who you are. Yes. And, and that's what shame attacks. It, it, it attacks who you are. The guilt that leads to repentance... Is good. It's yes. good. That sorrow, that, you know, sitting in that is, is the, what you're yes. talking about. That's the good thing. Not in shame, yes. but in, in true guilt that leads to the repentance of God. Correct. Because that brings healing. Right. That brings wholeness. And restoration. Restoration. And, and, yes. Yeah. All of mm-hmm. that. Now, verse 9 says, be miserable, mourn, and weep. Okay, that is not something that we hear in the church often. <laughs> yeah, because we don't like it when people are miserable, yeah. when they're mourning, or when they're weeping. We are very uncomfortable with people's pain <laughs> or with them feeling bad. We want everybody to have a smile on their face most of the time, right? And we we equate walking with the Lord as you should be smiling, happy, and content. Mm-hmm. But there is a season where we grieve yes. and we should grieve. Um, and one of the things we should grieve, um, okay, let me back up. The reason I like this is because this is what we call, or what I like to call walking in agreement with God about our sin. Yeah. This is when we look at what we've done and we get honest with God about it and we keep ourselves in the discomfort of being aware of our sin and mm. its consequences. Yeah. One of the things I'm seeing right now running rampant in the church is that we want to look at somebody and say, you should forgive me. I shouldn't have to have that brought back to my attention. That should be wiped away with forgiveness. And we won't, don't want to acknowledge the yuck of our sin and what it has done in the lives of others. Mm. We want to be given this grand eraser of forgiveness so that we can walk on like it never happened. Yeah. Okay, that, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm just going to say it, that's a lie from hell. Mm. Because that enables somebody to go, well, I'm allowed to smack you again, and you can't tell me I've done this 20 times, and it's worse than me doing it just this once. We want to hold a pattern of sin like it's not a pattern, and it's just this one instance, because that's been forgiven, and you're not allowed to hold that against me again. But if you—that's how it's being used. It, yeah, and I get that. And it, and uh, yes, and there's wow. evil, insidious evil in that. Wow. Because what it says is, you should ignore how I've treated you and what I've done, hmm. and I shouldn't be held accountable for the devastation that that has wreaked. That is not what this passage is talking about. You know, Gwen, I want to read this from a paraphrase that I've, mm. I've come to love. It's called the Passion Translation. Have you read any? Read yeah, it I've read a little bit of it. I, I love it. And I, I love it. I, lo- I, you know, I have my favorites that are, you know, literal translations, and I like to dig into the Greek. But then uh, these paraphrases, because of the, the wording of it, it hits my heart. It strikes me in a little bit different way. So I want to read this from the Passion Translation, uh, starting with verse 7. So then surrender to God, stand up to the devil and resist him, and he will turn and run away from you. Move your heart closer and closer to God, and he will come even closer to you. Make sure you cleanse your life, you sinners, and keep your heart pure and stop doubting. This is verse 9. Feel the pain of your sin. Be sorrowful and weep. Let your joking around be turned into mourning and your joy into deep humiliation. 
Be willing to be made low before the Lord, and He will exalt you. Mm. Here, here's the thing about sin, and we all sin, mm. and, and we offend, we sin against others. There are consequences of our sin, that ripple effect we talk about. If, if, we, are, um, if we don't take it seriously, and if we don't sit and weep and mourn that sin, it can in some cases be adding to the sin and the pain of for the other person. Yes. I mean, there's, there, there's no way you can take back what you said or what you did. But I believe true repentance, there is time spent in that mourning process. Yes. Because you, you take it as seriously as God wants it to be taken. And I think the time spent in that process... Okay, there's two thoughts on this. One, it needs to be in proportion to the devastation that the sin has caused others. Yeah. In other words, if it has wreaked a lot of devastation in a church community, it cannot receive instant forgiveness. Oh my gosh. It's and such restoration. a process. That process is going to be longer. It ha- and it has to be. And the right. person who is walking through that, and I've, I've watched this happen, Amazing things can come of it if you're willing to to make that journey in the process. Now and stay in humility. Stay with in it. humility. God has forgiven you, and yeah. you as the sinner say, "I've I, let's say I what say I'm the sinner that has done that, and I confess it before yeah. the church because all of the church has been hurt by it. If I can remain humble before God and walk." You know, walk this path of His forgiveness, but not expecting others, anything from others. Continue to walk mm-hmm. it. And, I, and I've seen this. Um, when you walk that path, and even when others are wrong, and maybe they're, they're working out their own aggressions, pain, all that stuff, and you don't let that bother you. I mean, it does probably bother you, but if you just keep walking that path, yeah. God is glorified in it in this way. It it helps. It's a journey. It's a journey. You don't get there from here. If you are a, an offender of the worst sort, or if you've murdered someone, or if you've stolen from someone, or if you've betrayed their trust, if you've, I mean, the list is endless right. and can be anything. Absolutely. But the severity of the sin, it's not that you're not forgiven, but that's, you're bearing the consequences of your earthly your earthly consequences of your actions. Yes. And some of those consequences are relational and they can't, how do I, they can't be fixed quickly. Yes. You know, I mean, we know this with broken bones. If that break is bad enough, it only mends to a certain point, you know, and it's the same way with some injuries that sin causes. For example, affairs in marriage. You know, a marriage might be able to heal and bounce back from one, but a pattern of affairs is going to be really hard to create safety in that relationship. It is. And it's going to take walking for the rest of the marriage in a boot cast and aware that that foot can't go play basketball. Mm. And it's going to have to be in a protected state for the rest of that marriage. And to expect that everything's going to be fine and you can treat that marriage like it's any old marriage that can take anything is very wrong. <laughs> it's a wrong assumption and it's arrogance. Mm. Because when that there's been to that level of brokenness, there has to be protective boundaries around it. And I got into something that I probably need to talk more about tomorrow, Thomasy. <laughs> yeah, we are at the end of our day. Yes. Huh. Um, so listeners, join us tomorrow and we'll pick up where we left off from today and talk about some of those boundaries and protections that can help heal in the aftermath of sin. Mm. Um, because we live in a fallen world and sometimes it takes a great amount of effort and protection to preserve and to create safety after brokenness and after sin has devastated. You found a place to belong here in the Circle of Friends.
This program was brought to you through the generous support of donors and listeners like you. To contact Circle of Friends Ministries, you can write to P.O. Box 345, Berlin, Ohio, 44610, or find us on Facebook at circleoffriends.fm. Program archives can be found at thelight959.com.